Hey guys, I just wanted to kind of document uh, the process of changing out this fuse here on the circuit board of your washing machine. Um, so the the challenge, let me see if I can focus this, yeah, so the challenge here is twofold. First, the fuse holders are actually soldered onto the board, so um, in order to change the fuse, if you don't want to bend the leads, which is not a great idea, you want to desolder them and take them out and then resolder them to the board. And then the second uh, sort of challenge here is if you look closely on the right side of the, uh, it's not really focusing, there you go. Those three little squares that are on the right side of the, um, of the circuit, uh, of the, the fuse holder are what are called PCB mounted resistors. They're printed circuit board mounted um, and you can see that they're they're tiny little things but they're and they're soldered directly to the to the board and um, the resistors are really important to the functioning of the of the whole circuit and if you get them too hot then uh, they can um, they can deform and, and lose their resistance uh, so you want to make sure to um, be really careful in how quickly and how much uh, how quickly you can desolder um, these components and then how much heat gets applied to those things you want to be quick so the way we're going to do it is um, I'm going to flip this guy over I just want to show you where it is so if we flip it over and keep track of where things are you can see there are right here um, these are the two leads that are the underside right there right there are the underside. So what we want to do is basically soak all the solder off of there so they just fall right out. Um, and the way that we're going to do that is with just a couple of tools that I will outline really quickly. Um, first here is soldering flux. Um, let me just see if I can do this with one hand. I can't. Hold on just a second. So soldering so soldering flux or flux paste um, is this stuff kind of just looks like jelly and it's a uh, it helps increase thermal conductivity so that solder flows into into little creases and crevices very easily. Second thing that's really important here is this is called solder wick. Um, it's basically, it's kind of, it's just copper, braided copper. Let's see if we can get that to focus in. Is it going to do it? Uh, let me try it one more time here. Basically this stuff, there you go. If you look at it, it's, it's braided copper and it essentially works just like a paper towel where you get it really hot and you set it on the melted solder and it soaks up all the solder that's around it and that's how we're going to get the solder away from the um, from the fuse terminals there. Use a little flux core solder for finishing the job once we got the new fuse in place and then um, this solder wick is going to get really hot so we've got a little you know tweezers here to hold on to it and then this is just for cutting a little. So here's the soldering iron setup all itself. Um, it, this one's adjustable temperature which is a really nice feature. You can set it to be um, lower to higher. Um, that's important because if it's not hot enough it won't melt the solder of course and on the other hand if it's too hot then you run into all kinds of problems like having to hurry through your work so you don't burn things etc. Um, so that's a really nice component. Here's the iron itself. Um, nothing too complicated. I guess the only thing to note here is that it's this one is um, pretty well tinned which means that um, the tip is nice and well coated in solder and nice and shiny um, and that really helps with the thermal conductivity and helping to flow solder onto the joints. So I'm going to set up a little bit um, and see if I can get some action shots of the solder wick um, soaking up the solder which is kind of the coolest part of this. And uh, So I'll this is back. the solder wick here and this is the flux paste and that's gonna that's a thermal thermally conductive jelly that's going to help pull the solder up into the wick. Um, I have my lovely assistant filming. Alexis, if you just want to go over here. So this 
Normally, if I'm just doing regular solder work, I'll heat it up to here, to this first red light um, the stand that works up to 330 degrees centigrade. I'm going to turn it up to 360 because there's a little bit, it, the heater has to go through, the iron has to heat the solder wick as well as the solder that's on the pad, so it just needs a little bit more juice, but not too much. There we go, so it's at the right place. So what I'm going to do is just set this. All right, so here's the terminal that I want to uh, get the solder off of. So I'm going to heat up just a little bit, but not too much. Just get it ready. I found that just getting it, getting it ready a little bit ahead of time will help. Okay. There we go. So now I'm just going to set this on top of here and then press down so that the solder wick is in between the solder and the soldering iron. Okay. And I'm just going to get, you can see this is starting to get, it's not shiny anymore, so I'm just going to get a little bit, and that helps again, that helps. with thermal conduction just helps get the heat straight to the solder terminal okay and just a little bit more here okay so alright so now let me do the other one real quick there's not a lot of solder on here you can just maybe just start to see how this is turning silver and that's because it's soaked up the solder that's on there. Let me get just a little bit more paste on here. And I'll do the next one. This is really helpful stuff if you're if you if you're doing your own project and you've soldered two things together. Sometimes it's an inefficient process and you end up with great big blobs of solder, way more than you need, and you want to get rid of the excess. This is really good stuff for that and just in general taking stuff apart. Now you could just <clears throat> you could just heat this up and push the things through and leave all the solder in place and that's you know sometimes that's the right thing to do but I find that just getting rid of the excess solder helps make for a cleaner process and again as I had mentioned a little earlier we got those delicate components on the other side so we don't want to there okay so you can see there's a little bit of silver on there. There wasn't too much solder on here to begin with, so we didn't have too much to get rid of. Okay. So uh, we didn't have the camera running while I did the work, but I basically just one at a time got them real hot and then pushed them through with my tweezers or my needle nose pliers rather. So and then I just did so when one back over. and then the We can go through the slow process of finding. There we are. So just lifted it up on one side and just to relieve some of the pressure, pushed it through a bit on the other. So I'm just going to replace this and then push it back into place and put new blobs of solder on it. So I'll be right back. Okay. So there's a very good book by author John Steinbeck called Of Mice and Men, and he got that title from a poem uh, talking about the value of foresight and its limitations. Uh, we ran into that here. Basically what I found was that the fuse that came with the circuit board was uh, probably pressure fitted into place under these little brackets here. These are the things that were actually soldered onto the board. So what I had to do is remove it completely and then break the glass and deform these little metal ends here um, so that I could work them out of these brackets here. So I've got that done. So now I'm going to take um, the fuse that your dad got right here. And we're just going to fit that into place. And then I'm just going to, once that's all put back together, I'm going to take the whole assembly and set it into place on the board. And then I'll have my lovely assistant come back over and we will. Um, I'll show you how to just cleanly solder it back onto the board. Back in just a second. Okay, so the board is back together. The new fuse is in place. 
here. I've got everything set up and it's pretty much good to go. Uh, I will say because this is going into a washing machine that's going to be vibrating a lot, I just want to put a little extra dollop of um, solder on the underside just to sort of help secure it. And then there were two more things I wanted to add. So this fuse fits, it's just kind of a tight um, fit into here. And since it's, a, since it's a replacement fuse, the fitting isn't quite as tight as the original was. So um, one concern that I had was that the electrical connection between the bracket and the fuse might uh, corrode over time. So what I did was I put a dollop of this dielectric grease in between the two components. Uh, and what that does, that's actually, um, it's an automotive thing. It's for uh, improving the connection between a spark plug and um, the engine block. Um, but it serves the same purpose uh, and it should help make sure that this component doesn't cause any problems in the future. So I'm just gonna flip this over and you can see here are the two solder joints uh, again here and here um, you can maybe it's hard to make out because this isn't a high quality video but um, you can see that maybe that there's uh, there's not a whole ton of extra solder on there so I'm just gonna just sort of show how to put how to put just a dollop of solder onto something so um, if you could just sort of follow this this tip here. So the um, so the first step is um, probably not. You probably can't see, but this isn't um, this isn't shiny. So I've got just a little bit of water on this little rag here that kind of helps make this shine. Now you can see that it's shiny. That's good. Um, I'm going to take. Well, now I'm going to put it back because I got ahead of myself. I'm going to take just a tiny bit of this solder paste here, and I'm going to put just a little dab really not much at all because this stuff is actually uh, it's a little bit acidic and it's a little so it's a little corrosive so if you put too much on you can end up actually causing a part to wear prematurely which you do not want but it's uh, um, it's very good as a thermal conductor and it really helps solder spread into place so um, so now I have my soldering iron heated up to the appropriate temperature this is a little flux core solder a rosin core solder rather so it has, it also has a thermally conductive material kind of embedded into the core of it, which helps with everything. But the, the secret here is to not use too much solder and to try to work qu quickly. So two ways to help with that is to just kind of get the part a little bit heated at first. And we get a little dollop on here onto my soldering iron. You can see it float on there. And now I'm just going to put it on there. And because of the because of the rosin, or because of the flux I put on there, it just flowed right on there. And I, I don't know if you can, I don't know how well you can see that, but I'm just going to do the same thing again. Just get a little bit of solder on here. The smoke from there is actually, all right, and let's just get that to flow a little bit. All right, good. So now I've just got a couple little dollars of solder. So now I'm just going to turn this down. Um, so the heater's off, this is going to slowly cool down and that helps with keeping the tip of the soldering iron shiny so the next time I f have to fix something that I broke, uh, it's an easier job. So you can just barely make out, didn't happen quite as well on this side, but on this side you can see that the solder actually flowed through the board and up onto this a little bit. So I, so I know just from looking at the, both of these that I've got a nice solid uh, electrical and to a certain extent mechanical connection. I guess uh, a good thing to say at this point is that it's very rarely a good idea to rely on a solder connection to make a, a mechanical link between two components. You want to have a nice tight uh, mechanical fit before you solder. That's sort of the best practice and that was the case here but just for because this is going to be in a in a machine that vibrates I just wanted to give it just a little bit more solder than I might otherwise. So, yeah, so now the thing's back together. Um, we're going to get this back to your house. I'll get this ed edited together and on YouTube so you can watch it. And um, that, uh, that part of the project is done.